Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest spent 14 years mm. playing in the NBA, even winning a ring with the San Antonio Spurs back in 2003. He's been back on the court playing in the Big Three, dunking on NBA legends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's also an ESPN NBA analyst, and now he's teaming up with another NBA great, Matt Barnes, yes. to talk sports on the Showtime Sports Podcast, All the Smoke, because mm -hmm. you know they want all the smoke. Yes, they do. Please welcome down to the circle. Steven Jackson. Yes. Yes. Look at Steven Jackson. Hey. You shop. Boy, you shop. I like this green on you. Just green. for the ladies. Yeah. Yeah. How, How are you? you? How's everything, sir? Thanks for having yeah. me. Absolutely. Good to see y'all. Good to see you as well. <laughs> they said first purple pillow, so yeah, this, that's the first purple pillow. pillow. Right, yes, right, yes, yes. On. Now look here, Steve. <laughs> you know, I just like to get right on into this basketball As talk. You should. Because, you know, I have a good time down to the NBA. Mm -hmm. But speaking of basketball and not the NBA, mm -hmm. the NCAA, mm -hmm. right. with this new um, implementation of, of funds now for um, college students, mm -hmm. what is your take on that, especially since you came up in an era where that wasn't the case? Yeah, I came, I came straight out of high school, right. so it was different at that time, but I look at it totally different. You can go to war at 18 and risk your life. Mm -hmm. You should be able to make money off a of sport right. at 18. So they behind. This, this is long overdue, and uh, I think because California implemented it first, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Mayor Gavin Newsom yes. signed the bill on mm -hmm. the bronze show, right. I think all these other schools didn't want California winning all the championships right. and all the top players. Right. So it was. the NBA, I mean the NCAA jumped on it right there because, you know, you got schools like Alabama, all these other top schools. Right that don't want to fall to the bottom of the bracket. So mm -hmm. it, it was something they had to do. They had to. Mm -hmm. They had Even to. a playing field. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So now, 41 years old, you haven't even put the basketball down. You're still like, I got to keep up. going. <laughs> still turning. Why, 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 why did you want to keep playing? Was it still in you? I'm one of those guys that really love the game. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've definitely, it definitely changed my life, my family's life, but I actually played the game for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, for I, I knew what the game has done for me. Uh, I grew up playing on the court with rocks and crack bottles wow. and uh, all kind of mm -hmm. stuff on the court. So the game is, is, is different for me than it is now. Yeah. More kids are interested in what the game could do for them and not love the game. Yes. You know what I mean? And so I grew up in a different era and I still love playing basketball. God bless me to stay able to, to play at a at a high level, my body's still healthy, yes. so I'm, I'm gonna go as long as I can. Yes. And you, you talk a lot about that too um, on your social media about how um, the game has changed because of the intensity of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that affects the championships and the playoffs because of the referees now being so lenient with these calls mm -hmm. and so excessive with yeah. these calls. Inconsistent. Yes. What mm -hmm. do you what what do you think is the biggest change in the NBA now that has kind of diminished some of the value of it? That's good. With the competition, you know, too many guys working out in the summertime. Uh, th these guys are it's, it's, it's too friendly now. You know, I, I don't think they t they taking the the competition level out of the game. All mm -hmm. these guys hanging out in the summertime. Now you have the guy that's at the end of the bench, he's making 1.5 million now. So he don't even have to work to get on the court. He's already making money. So it's the game oil. has changed. When I was playing, the guy at the end of the bench, you holding on to being on the team. You might be off the team next week. Right, so right. you constantly have something to prove. Right. These, it, it's changed now. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy for the players today. Yes. That they're making all this money. Right. You know, that they that they having it that way. They can predict where they want to play with the guys, stuff like that. Yeah. And you got to credit LeBron for that. But at the same time, the competition is not the same, and we want guys to still appreciate the game and not just reap the benefits from it. So you think mm -hmm. it's an uneven playing field with guys being able to kind of make the decisions as to where they're going to play. Mm -hmm. Do you oh, think that's advantageous or yeah. not? Well, I, I love it. I love it because the owners have controlled the league. They told, boy, you got to <laughs> right. do this. Boy, you got to do right. that. Come on, boy. I'm, I'm paying you this money. You got to say this. You can't say that. Saying. They've been right. doing that for so long. So I'm glad that I'm glad we can control our own narrative yes. now. Right. You know, and, and I think that's what's that's what's offending a lot of people now. Yeah. Well, you've teamed up with somebody else who's very vocal. Uh, very vocal. All of the issues <laughs> down to the basketball court. <laughs> right. Matt Box. Yes. yes. Now you have this new podcast. What brought that about? Well, we both were doing um, ESPN and Fox a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was having us on their shows and we were killing it. And uh, you know we were hanging around just smoking and chilling one day and talking about doing our own show. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we never knew it would get the opportunity from Showtime. We never knew it happened. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was just something that we spoke into existence, something that we believed that could really happen. Yeah. 
And uh, Showtime gave us opportunity, and uh, it's been taking off. We got the uh, number one podcast in America right now. Yes. I, I bet. I bet. I'm going to be watching, because yes. y'all know y'all going to be real petty. Now, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to be getting all the TV. You know that. Right. You know that. So what is the, the biggest transition between being a basketball player, because, mm. you know, y'all are like a fraternity, mm -hmm. right. and then going into broadcasting without messing up the code? Yeah, I think I think with me, it, it's, it's easy for me, because... Yeah. What you see is what you get, yeah, and I've always, always been like that. Had. You kept it 100 you know? either way. Yes. And, and if I see a guy that I said something about on TV, he knows coming me the right way because it might not end the way you want it. Mm -hmm. And also, <laughs> you want this smoke. nothing I say is out of hate. Right. It's out of respect for the game. Mm -hmm. And if I say it on TV, I can say it to them. I can pull them to right. the side and say it to them as well. Right. So yes. I have their respect and their relationship with guys. And they know it's not coming from a place of hate with me. It's coming right. from loving the you game. You always yeah. kept it real. I covered you when I was a sports reporter on radio. And you always kept it real in the locker room. And I, I just <laughs> I love that. that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I love that. And you're also keeping it real. By you. Boy, you got, some, you got some bars. You got some lyrics. Oh, oh my goodness. Don't do, Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Man, I, uh, you know, do, you know, every athlete thinks they can rap. Right. Every rapper thinks they can play sports. But I think um, I was one of the only guys that was actually releasing mixtapes while I was playing. Yeah. You know, it, it was a hobby of mine. Uh, shout out to all the other players, Damon Lillard, Lou, and all those guys. But uh, it was just a hobby of mine. I wasn't making no money off of it. Right. Trust me. Uh, actually, I was even doing shows during the season. Really? I'm flying to a city. Play the game. We'll stay the night. I'll do a show that night. I know, so I was doing stuff like that, but it wasn't beneficial. Yeah. And if it ain't beneficial, it's artificial. How yeah. Well, you know, um, yeah. Tayana Taylor, husband. Yeah. Uh, Iman. Iman Shabbat. He's nice. nice. He's nice. No, he's nice. Iman, let me tell him, you something. Him and Lou and yeah. Damian Lillard, they, they serious. Cold. Yeah, they yeah. serious. Yeah. They got it all going on. That's serious. good. Well, it was a good time yes. having you down to oh, the man. circle. I am, just, I am just enamored of this man. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Be sure to check out his new podcast on Show. Time Sports on the Showtime Sports Channel on YouTube and make sure you follow him on the gram at underscore stack underscore. Right?